Upstate Medical University in Syracuse, New York, invites you to be the informed patient with the podcast that features experts from Central New York's only academic medical center. I'm your host, Amber Smith. Many people who use cannabis for medical reasons are seeking pain relief. Medical cannabis is currently used as an off-label pain treatment without Food and Drug Administration approval. Is cannabis a natural herb that is safe to use? Today, I'll be talking about risks that may be associated with the daily use of cannabis with two guests. Dr. Brian Johnson is a clinical professor emeritus of psychiatry and behavioral sciences and the recently retired director of addiction medicine at Upstate. And Dr. Yan Lee Zong James is a research associate professor of psychiatry and behavioral sciences. Welcome both of you to the Informed Patient. Thank you, Amber. Good to be here. Your research was published in the American Journal of Addictions. Let's start with your conclusion first and then talk about how you got there. You say that daily cannabis use may make chronic pain worse over time by reducing pain tolerance so that people who use cannabis daily may be risking addiction without long-term benefit for chronic pain. Is that right? That's absolutely correct, Amber. That's the most important message that we wanted to convey through this study. Reduced tolerance to pain is not new for other drugs like opioids, alcohol, and nicotine, but it's the first time that we reported um, also happens to people who chronically use cannabis. And this is really important because it's becoming a increasingly widely accepted and considered relatively safe drugs to use for pain. But people should still be aware that it comes with certain risks, like we showed. And I do want to highlight that one of the uh, most important things that made the study possible is the incorporation of co-pressor time tests into the clinical practice that Dr. Johnson had had it for over 10 years at the Department of Psychiatry. This was a pain service. He saw over 2,000 patients with all kinds of pain and various addictions. So with almost all of the patients that he had tested for co time, which is an objective measure of their pain tolerance, and we were able to see that for people who use cannabis chronically, that this system is also compromised. Let me, if I may, you mentioned the cold presser test. Dr. Johnson, can you explain what that is and how it's done? It's uh, a fancy name for a very simple procedure. It's a beer cooler full of ice water. There's an aquarium circulating pump. The patient puts their completely normal forearm in and it really hurts. And then we just time how long the patient is able to keep their arm under the ice. Interesting. Very simple to understand. Now, for this study, you were focused on people who were using cannabis for chronic pain. Does that mean, there, would it be treated differently if someone was using it for acute pain? Yes. It's called a potent process, and it's true of alcohol, nicotine, and opioids, as well as marijuana. Anything that reduces pain short-term increases it if you use it constantly. Dr. Zhang James, how many patients were included in this study, and over what period of time were you focused on? So this is a retrospect. Um, review of patient medical records. We had records over 10 years, so we had over 2,000 patients total. It was difficult to find pay people who only used cannabis without other drugs, but we were able to find 47 that had used cannabis without opioid or alcohol, <laughs> you know. Um, 37 of them also used nicotine. So in order to uh, tease apart that effect. Fortunately, we were able to find also 32 patients who used only nicotine, no cannabis and no any other drugs. And we were also be able to find 30 of them who had actually did not use any of these drugs. So it is a relatively small study, but we're able to see the effect and definitely would be interesting 
future studies that um, can replicate this finding in the larger sample size. Let me ask you, I don't understand why you in, included tobacco use or nicotine. What, what difference does that make or what impact does that have? Dr. Johnson? This is a little known thing, but we've got wonderful colleagues at Syracuse University who are important researchers on nicotine and pain. So Professor Joe Dietrich would be the leader of that group. And they've published several studies showing that if you inhale tobacco, uh, you've got more pain. So interesting. The context here is we've got a database of about 2,000 patients who came to the pain service. And we were so careful to find people who only used nicotine, only used marijuana. Of course, using marijuana and nicotine together is common. So that was the third group. And then we could only find 30 people who did not have a history of exposure to any addictive drugs. Did the cannabis users in your study ingest the cannabis by smoking? Yes. Eating marijuana is uh, unusual in our population. Most people inhale the drug. And of course, that's a weird route of administration. I'm always saying when you take an aspirin for pain, do you smoke it, inject it, snort it, or eat it? Almost everyone eats their drugs. To use your lung to get drugs into your brain is just weird. Well, you looked at daily cannabis use. How much cannabis were they using, though, daily? Okay, so this is another thing about studies. Studies don't indicate anything about one particular person. We've got to agglomerate people into categories. So if you used one joint or if you had two joints for breakfast, two blunts for lunch and five uh, cigars full of marijuana for dinner, uh, you went into the daily use category. This is Upstate's The Informed Patient Podcast. I'm your host, Amber Smith. I'm talking with Dr. Brian Johnson and Dr. Yan Li Zong James, who both work in Upstate's Department of Psychiatry and Behavioral Sciences, and we're talking about whether daily use of cannabis provides chronic pain relief. Now, Dr. Johnson, can you explain how the body develops hyperalgesia? Okay, well, uh, one uh, idea to mention is just like uh, the way we got to daily marijuana use is daily opioid use. Every drug that comes from a plant, so of course, nicotine comes from the tobacco plant, morphine comes from the poppy plant, and marijuana comes from the marijuana plant. These are natural substances. And we all make hormones, we make cannabinoids, we make uh, nicotinic acetylcholine, and we make endogenous morphine or endorphins. That's why we've got a receptor system. When you pour huge amounts of these hormones into your body by either taking opioid medications, inhaling cigarettes or marijuana, you change the receptor system. Dr. Zon James, does that receptor system, does that mean that all types of pain are going to be affected then? Not just the chronic pain that the person has, but for instance, if they get a paper cut, is that going to hurt more because they've become more sensitized? Is that how that works? Yes. In some sense, yes, exactly, because all the pains that we receive from peripheral simulations, either it's headache or muscle ache, injury, post-surgical pain, or paper cuts, <laughs> all mediated through our brain's central pain um, system. 
We don't know exactly how different drugs act on this, but we do know that when the system gets sensitized and when patients had reduced the tolerance, all kinds of pains get amplified. That is actually why we were able to use compressor time to measure the health of the central pain system. How soon after you start using marijuana on a daily basis is this likely to develop where you have this increased sensitivity? No one knows. We, we just discovered this. So, you know, if we had a million dollars, we could uh, take people and have them start to use marijuana or placebo and answer your question. But all we can tell you right now is anything that helps with pain short term is going to worsen long term. What if a person stops taking cannabis? Will their pain sensitivity, will it, will it go back or is the damage done already? Same answer. We just discovered this. So we can answer that about opioids. And unfortunately, a lot of opioid-induced hyperalgesia looks like it's permanent. Other people seem to get better over months and years. So the message here is be careful. Uh, don't use something that helps your pain every day. You want to use it once in a while. You want to take an oxycodone to help you sleep because your back is really hurting, fine. You want to smoke a joint, no problem. Just be careful that drugs that you use frequently cause this opponent process. A lot of patients and even medical providers are seeing cannabis as a treatment for pain. Is there evidence showing that it can help with that? Or where did they get the idea of using cannabis for pain control in the first place? Well, it, it's a flavor of the weak phenomenon. You know, anything that f makes you feel good should be good for everything, right? But unfortunately, it's like uh, opioids were 20 years ago. Everyone was saying, gee, we've got a great drug Oxycontin that is magnificent for pain, everyone should be on it. 20 years later, unfortunately, they're saying the same thing about marijuana. Are there good long term studies? There are a few. Ours is one, and we could find four other studies, and they all show the same thing. Are recreational users of cannabis likely to develop increased pain sensitivity also, just like the daily users? Yes, it happens if you use heroin for fun or if you use heroin because your back hurts, you're going to do the same thing to your brain. And that's true of marijuana, too. If you use it every day or frequently, you're going to attack your own pain damping cannabinoid system and you're going to make more pain for yourself. I know that you focused on the chronic pain, but people also turn to medical cannabis for anxiety and depression. Is there evidence that it can help or that it might hurt in those situations? The way I describe it is the human brain seems to be set up to have all of us be slightly miserable. It's a survival thing. It makes you go out and do stuff to feel better. So whether it's anxiety, depression, pain, those are the three drivers of misery. If you're slightly miserable and you win the lottery and you have a billion dollars, you'll be happy. but a year later, you'll be slightly miserable. So if you use marijuana uh, for anxiety, depression, or pain, if you use it constantly, a year later, you'll be even more miserable with whatever you're using it for. And there are good studies about that. There's more 
depression. There's more suicidality. There's even that prospective Australian study that took a baseline at zero and then looked four years later, people who used marijuana were not only in more pain, but they were more anxious. Especially for people who use cannabis for long term, that, um, when we, if you stop the withdrawal symptoms includes increased anxiety and all those bad feelings, right? Yeah. So one way to put it is withdrawal unmasks the uh, opponent process. If you're in opioid withdrawal, you have more pain. If you're in marijuana withdrawal, you have more pain. In both cases, you've got more anxiety. It unmasks the changes that you've created in your own brain. Is there a risk of becoming addicted to marijuana if you're using it daily? Yes, absolutely. And, you know, it's interesting. What does it mean if you are addicted to marijuana? Well, the standard definition of addiction is repeated harm for, from use. So if you drink and it's always fun, that's great. Have a good time. If you drink and it keeps making trouble for you, alcoholism is repeated harm from drinking. It's the same thing with marijuana. If you use it and it's always fun, have a great time. If you start to develop that amotivational syndrome, if you get the hyperemesis so that you're vomiting constantly, if it makes you psychotic, if it changes your blood vessels and you start to have strokes, if it makes you stupid and uh, you can't remember anything, you're a high school student and as a freshman you got A's and now you're getting C's as a sophomore and you're headed for straight F's, uh, the denial system says, whoa, I couldn't be vomiting because of marijuana. The doctor should look for what's really wrong, or I can't be flunking out of high school because of marijuana. Uh, I'm just not studying anymore. It's the marijuana. Well, what do you recommend be done for patients who have chronic pain and have been using cannabis daily, and now they've got this in? increased pain sensitivity, what can be done for them? Well, they should come to our addiction medicine service. It's terrific. It uses the cold presser test. Uh, psychotherapy is the main modality of treatment, but we can treat anything else. If you got anxiety, pain, depression, ADHD, uh, those are immediately recognized and treated along with uh, your pain. So just call up 464-3130 uh, and make an intake appointment and get some expert feedback. Does the treatment typically include weaning the person off of cannabis? No. You know, weaning is you were smoking eight joints a day, so uh, smoke seven for a week and then six for a week. We routinely ask people and, and their support people who are required to come with them to stop the drugs and let us help you stop. You're going to go through marijuana withdrawal if you've been using it every day, and it's unpleasant, but there are medications that help and we'll talk you through it. You'll come twice a week. And when you're in distress, every visit you see someone who can prescribe medication and you have a 50 minute psychotherapy hour. So we'll collaborate with you and find our way through it. Well, that's good to know. I appreciate both of you making time for this interview. Well, thank you for having us. Thank you. My guests have been Dr. Brian Johnson, a clinical professor emeritus of psychiatry and behavioral sciences, 
and the recently retired Director of Addiction Medicine at Upstate, and Dr. Yan Li Zong James, a Research Associate Professor of Psychiatry and Behavioral Sciences. The Informed Patient is a podcast covering health, science, and medicine, brought to you by Upstate Medical University in Syracuse, New York, and produced by Jim Howe. Find our archive of previous episodes at upstate.edu slash informed. This is your host, Amber Smith, thanking you for listening.